Hey everyone, my name is Ned, and today I'd like to show you 10 useful UI and inventory tips that can hopefully kind of uh, speed up the rate at which you're able to do things in game and just kind of help out any new players that might be finding the inventory system to be a little bit alien. Uh, and so in this video, I'm hoping I can kind of just give you my best advice on how to actually navigate it efficiently because sometimes splitting things and, and transferring and all that kind of stuff can be a little, a little slow early on. So in an effort to not waste your time, let's start with tip number 10. This is how to scale the UI. Now, I, I think you can do this on both PC and uh, console. And so you'll do this by going to your options menu here, and then you want to find the UI general scale and UI item slot scale. Now the general scale, what it does is it scales up the uh, actual inventory screen here as well as these uh, icons down here in the bottom right, uh, which are your stats. And then it also uh, changes the size of the debuffs and buffs that you might have. So for example, if I eat some weird food, um, let's see, let me grab a, a actually no, this works. If I eat this, right, you can see that buff in the bottom right. Now if I scale this up, that gets larger. Uh, and if I scale it down, that gets way smaller. So uh, that's the; those are the kinds of things that it changes. It also changes the uh, stats in the top right or top left. So if you uh, hold H, for example, on PC, you can see those. You know, it says the time of day and then the actual day itself, plus the name and, and uh, tribe name. If I scale this up, you should see that that also uh, increases as well. Yeah, as you can see, it gets a little bit larger. And to add on to that, I know a lot of things that it changes. It also changes the size of the font when you're looking at uh, structures and and even tames as well, like like these uh, weird Akatinas. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna set this back to normal. Now the next the next part of this is the UI item slot scale, and it doesn't change a whole lot. All it does is actually just change the size of the item slots down here, which is where you obviously put your tools and weapons and, and other things like that. Tip number nine is how to disable menu transitions and tooltip delay. Now, uh, disabling menu transitions, what this does is if you turn it off, uh, by default it's off, what it does is that actually makes your, uh, your menus kind of transition slowly rather than being an immediate thing that pops up. Um, as you can see there, now if I turn this on, what it's going to do is immediately inventory pops up. There's no delay there, there's no uh, kind of tr transition, so I definitely recommend having this on just to make things a little bit more fast paced. There's also no tooltip delay. What this does is if you have tooltips enabled, which I'll be talking about in a second, um, tooltips, you will, there won't be a delay. Whereas if I have this, uh, so it'll show up immediately. So if I turn this off, you'll see uh, the tooltips will take a second to show up. See so if I mouse over, it takes, you know, maybe uh, a third of a second to actually kind of show up. And so I prefer to play with this on just so that they show up immediately. You can get the information right away. Now, tip number eight is give default survivor items. This is also another option. Sorry, I know a lot of options. We're almost done with these. Now, what give default survivor items does is it's it's a setting that's enabled by default. And if you here, let me go find some uh, organic polymer to dye. Um, so what it does is if you have uh, give default survivor items enabled, Whenever you die and whenever you respawn specifically, you'll actually spawn with the skins in your inventory that you would normally spawn with because of your achievements. So all of these skins here, as you can see, they only spawn in my inventory because I had that give default survivor items on. So if you don't want it on, if you don't want to spawn the skins, make sure you disable this and then hit apply. Oh, hey, hey, Nacho, what the hell? Give it back. <laughs> Come on, man. What the hell? Okay, so tip number seven is toggle extended HUD info and inventory access sounds. So right here, um, somewhere <laughs> right here, toggle extended HUD info, what this does is if you enable it, it'll always uh, show you your extended HUD stuff. So if I go ahead and eat a, um, a broth here, a mushroom broth for no reason. Oh wait, humans can't eat this, why am I doing that? Okay, uh, let's eat this one, right? The toggle extended HUD info just makes it a toggle rather than something that you have to hold down. So. Um, on PC, if I press H, it'll actually just show up there. As you can see in the top left, you can see the day, uh, the time, um, all that info, and it just stays there without me having to hold H. I personally usually actually just play with this off because I don't need to see all the info all the time, um, only when I need to, and then I can just hold H to, to actually get it. And then also the inventory access sounds. If you So right now I have them on. What this does is, for example, if I go up to a preserving bin, you can, you can probably hear the preserving bin access sound. It sounds like you're opening a wooden box. And then if I go to options and disable it, then you won't hear anything. It's just, yeah, there's no sound there. And so I usually play with it on, but I could honestly go with it on or off. It doesn't really make a difference to me. Okay, now tip number six is how to actually uh, enable and disable the extended item info in your inventory. Uh, let me make sure I didn't, hopefully I didn't drop anything important there. Um, so to do this, you actually want to press Q on PC. 
on console, let's see if I can, let me see if I can actually find, oh here it is, so if you press in the left stick, um, I guess this would be like L3 on a, on a kind of PS4 controller, then you'll actually extend, you'll toggle the extended item info. And so yeah, Q on PC, L3 on uh, PS4, and the other kind of button for it on Xbox. And then um, this way you can actually see the name of the item, and this can be pretty helpful early on when you're not totally used to what everything's called, but for me personally, I already know the names of you know all the items in the game, so I don't really need this on. The next tip is how to enable and disable tooltips. Um, now, this thing right here, if you click on it, uh, whether you're on PC or console, toggle tooltips, what this does is it uh, actually enables the tooltips, which are the things that show up here. As you can see, whenever I go over it, whenever I select the item, kind of, and I'm like mousing over it or going over it with the controller. It's actually showing. It's actually giving me a description. You know, showing me more info about it. Uh, for example, who crafted it, the item repair cost, and for cryopods, this is really important because this is actually how you look at the stats of your dinos when they're in cryopods. But yeah, um, I don't know if there's a button for it on console aside from just clicking on this toggle tooltips button. But on, on PC, it's G. If you press G, that'll enable and disable it. The next tip is the sorting items feature and using folders. So the sorting items can be pretty helpful sometimes. Uh, I usually use it for other containers, not so much in my own inventory. So for example, if I click alphabetical, uh, it's going to sort everything in here alphabetically um, rather than unsorted where it's just whatever you put in last basically. Uh, you just kind of pile things on top of each other. So, or you can sort it by weight, you know, how much things uh, weigh obviously. This is really helpful, especially when you're trying to move uh, lots of stuff because um, it's better to move the large amount of uh, really light items first. That way you just have a couple stacks of really heavy things depending on how much you're trying to transfer. Now the folders are uh, right here, as you can see. If you click on this folder view, this is by default on, I think, whenever you start playing Ark. And this can be sometimes helpful, but usually it just gets in the way. And I would actually recommend turning folder view off. If you'd like, you can also turn on this, uh, or turn off the show engrams, which makes it to where the inventory in containers, like smithies, fabricators, tech replicators, all that kind of stuff where you can craft things in, they're actually separate. And so the inventory, the items inside of it, are separate from the actual crafting engrams itself that you're able to craft. And so in some cases, if say the inventory is really full or if you have a lot of engrams learned, it can maybe be helpful to actually split these up by clicking on the show engrams. And then of course you can make folders inside of your own inventory. So for example, if I wanted to make a folder for my cryopods, I'll click uh, create thing. Okay, Helena, go away. And then so here's a, <laughs> here's a cryopod folder and then I'm gonna drag all my cryopods in here. Um, wow, it, it doesn't even care. I don't think this is supposed, I don't think this is how folders are supposed to work. Okay, so folders aren't actually normally supposed to work like this. For some reason right now, they're uh, the cryopods are like staying outside of the folder, but maybe they changed it, I'm not totally sure. But yeah, this way you can kind of have your thing sorted, although I personally don't use this a lot uh, since it's kind of just an extra hassle. It's easier to just not have a ton of things in your inventory, keep it clean, keep it uh, organized, and just kind of have it all right here. Okay, now tip number three is the engrams. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? I got this from a loot crate. I, I got this from a loot crate yesterday. What? What did you get? Oh my god. Okay, so tip number three is engrams, tribe manager, tame groups, and explorer notes. So these are the uh, little buttons you can see up at the top here. The engrams are, of course, where you learn all of your, all of your things that you can craft. Uh, so you can obviously see the whole list right here, and you can scroll down. And right now, when these things up here aren't selected, it's just going to show all of the uh, engrams from the DLCs that you own. And it might show them if you don't know them, I'm not entirely sure, I haven't double checked that since I've had all the DLCs for such a long time. But then you can also select uh, unlearned engrams, which only shows the ones you haven't learned. And then you can uh, force it to only show island, only show scorched earth, any combination of these things. Uh, just keep in mind, it doesn't save whenever you leave the inventory, so for example, right there, and then I go back. The, it didn't save or anything. So moving on from the engrams, we have the tribe manager. This is a very important uh, user interface because you definitely want to be really careful leaving your tribe. Uh, when you leave your tribe, it essentially you lose ownership of everything you have. This is your tribe log here. Uh, you can, uh, if you're an, if you're the owner, you can actually promote people to. Uh, owner, you can give them the ownership, you can make them an admin, which allows them to uh, do things depending on how you have permission set up, which you can find here in the governance tab. You can also rename your tribe, uh, you can toggle online members, which shows only the ones online. In this case, it's just me and my friend Nacho, so. Then we've got manage tribe groups. I haven't actually used this, I think this is for the permissions though. 
Then we've got manage alliances. This is uh, just, these are just a couple of the alliances that I'm in. And then this button down here, reverse log order, this makes it to where the, I think by default, it's starting from the oldest to the, to the latest. I prefer to have it this way where it's reversed so that you can see kind of the newest stuff at the top. I only actually learned about this recently as well. Next we have the tame groups. These can be used to actually switch uh, which group of dinos that you communicate with um, through group whistle commands. And so it can be really helpful, especially when in boss fights and trying to command a very uh, specific set of creatures, kind of separate from other groups. That way you can kind of switch your group mid-fight, uh, whistle, do this, you know, switch the group again to another group, whistle, do that, um, and so on. The last tab that we have here is the explore notes tab. Now keep in mind, explore notes can only be uh, actually collected on maps that are story maps. So none of the non-story maps, which include uh, kind of the center, Ragnarok, Valgero, and Crystal Isles. These maps were made by modders, and so they don't have uh, the kind of official explorer notes that the developers made. Uh, as you can see here, I don't have any of these maps selected, so it's just showing all of Helena's notes from every single map, basically, which, as you can see, there, there are a lot of them. These are also all of uh, her dossiers, which show all of the different creatures from the game. So tip number two is uh, keyboard bindings. Now, this is pretty much for PC exclusively. I don't think you can change bindings on console, but I would recommend if your inventory is still I, I would recommend changing it to a tab, uh, to a key that you're more comfortable with. For me, this is tab. And then additionally, you can set a key to drop item. For me, this is tilde, um, which is right next to one. It's kind of easy to hit compared to the O, which is like, you know, halfway across the keyboard, basically. The last tip that I have for you is probably the most helpful and important one that I found uh, helps people the most is how to transfer, how to split, and how to drop effectively and quickly. So on console, this is a little bit harder, but, um, and you still have to kind of do it manually, but on PC, what you can do is, so if you hold shift and then drag the item out, out of itself, this will cut it in half. So it'll just split the stack in two. Um, you can do this with anything. Now, if you hold control and then drag it out of itself, this will actually drag uh, just one out of the stack. And you can do this over and over again. Also, what you can do is if you want to split a stack completely individually into, into single little stacks, you can click split all, and then there you go. It splits them all. Uh, I'm going to quickly drop all that and then pick it back up. That's another tip if you want to if you want to quickly put a bunch of uh, individual stacks into a single stack, what you can do is just search that item, click drop all, just so you don't drop your entire inventory, and then transfer all, and then there you go. Another thing that you can do, which is really important, is whenever you're trying to transfer something, let's say you're trying to put rifle bullets inside of the replicator, and you're trying to put in maybe half of them, or maybe a quarter of them, rather than right-clicking and going to split stack, and then clicking half, and then right-clicking, split stack, half, what you can do is just uh, hold shift, press T, which is by default T is the transfer button. Uh, if I just press T normally, it'll just transfer the whole thing. But if I hold shift and then press it, it's gonna split, uh, it's gonna put half in. And then if I hold shift and press T again, it's gonna put another half of what it had there into the replicator. Another thing is if you hold control and press T, or if you even hold T while holding control, uh, you'll kind of just siphon in just a, you know, a, a controlled amount of individual bullets or individual, you know, items, whatever it is you're trying to transfer. So I definitely recommend using these. These are some of the most important tips in the game for quickly doing things because otherwise you have to, you know, manually right click on this, click transfer, and be like, oh, well, I want some of the bullets back, so I'm going to transfer it. And then, oh, well, <laughs> there you go. See, if you normally press, if you right click and do it manually, then it just takes one. There's all kinds of, it just makes everything so much faster. If you hold shift uh, or hold control, press T, you know, spam shift, just all these different uh, combinations to kind of just siphon in almost exactly how much you want into any given inventory. The last part of this tip is actually something that anyone that's new to the game will find really, really helpful. If your inventory gets full, let's say you start hitting a tree and then you get super encumbered and you can't move anymore, um, what you want to do is if you're trying to move those resources over somewhere or move any really heavy items over to a given spot, what you can do is look in the direction of that thing. So let's say I want to put this gunpowder in that industrial grinder over there. If I look towards it and then drop all this gunpowder and then get a running jump, run, jump, grab all, then as you can see, I just jumped, grabbed all of it, and then traversed like a decent distance with all of these things in my inventory. And so this is very helpful. I've used this, I use this all the time whenever I'm not uh, using tech armor, which is uh, basically broken because it gets around the weight stat, and so you don't even have to do that when you have tech armor. But so yeah, that is uh, all 10 of my inventory tips. Hopefully that showed you how to do things quickly, efficiently, and, uh, and not waste any time. Thank you for watching my video. If you found any of these tips helpful or if you 
just happen to not know about some of these beforehand, consider giving the video a like and subscribing to my channel if you would like to see more videos from me. Bye everyone.